Hello, good afternoon everybody. This is Brian Garvin from Oceanside, California. Um, today I'm in Ocean, well, of course I just said I'm in Oceanside, right? The weather's great and um, it's slightly overcast, but generally a, a beautiful day. Um, today I'm gonna be doing a review of Uniswap, um, which is currently one of the biggest uh, decentralized, or currently the one of the biggest decentralized exchanges that, that are operating. And I do own a bag of this crypto. So I'm gonna deep dive and review this in some pretty good detail. Um, first, I need to read you my legal disclaimer. Um, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All of us, including myself, are responsible for making our own investment decisions. Okay, now um, I'm gonna go over the Uniswap launch. I do have Uniswap in my portfolio because I, I look at it as a very strong DeFi play. Um, Uniswap was launched on November 2nd, 2018 on the Ethereum mainnet. Um, it took Hayden Adams, which is the main developer, it took him over one year of development um, to, for this uh, exchange to become a reality. Um, it solved all the problems we had with previous decentralized exchanges like Ether Delta. I was actually around back in 2017 and 2018 where Ether Delta, when Ether Delta was, excuse me, operating, it had a super, super terrible reputation. It was 100% unuser friendly. It was the hardest exchange in the world to do business with, basically. Um, like, it, it was actually easy to make a mistake and they didn't have a lot of liquidity. If you make a mistake on, on, on Ether Delta, you can either lose all or some of your crypto. They, they just had, conversions you needed to do and you needed to know exactly how much ETH this and this was worth and, and most people just couldn't use it properly. Um, the SEC in 2018 sued Zachary Coburn, which is the owner. Um, so for DeFi to live on, people needed a much more user-friendly exchange. There was a very high demand for it. Um, and, that, and they also needed an exchange that had plenty of liquidity. And that's when Uniswap was born. Uh, they use what they call an automated market maker model. Um, you can actually, there's, it's a real detailed explanation to go into this and you're just going to be an investor in Uniswap. So there's no need for me to go into crazy detail about what an AMM is, but I, I can tell you that it's a hundred, uh, Uniswap is a hundred percent, uh, decentralized. It's permissionless and it's also censorship resistant. Um, it's built on the concept of liquidity pools. And as I said before, automated, uh, market makers, um, just to give you an idea how, how much volume they do, they do, they, so far they've done $1.4 trillion in trading volume. That means that's how much money has, has been executed in trades for different coins and whatever. They have two competitors that are pretty close to them. One is called a sushi swap and one is called curve. Um, another competitor is pancake swap, but all these three have 90% or less trading volume just to give you a perspective of how big Uniswap is compared to its closest competitors. Um, now they have different versions of Uniswap and, and I don't want you to get hung up on this because you'll see it all the time. Like if you go to coin market cap and research a coin, you click markets and it say, might say something like uh, Uniswap Ethereum, Uniswap base or whatever. Um, but they have a, or, or, but it'll also say Uniswap V2 or Uniswap V3. And I'm gonna go into this in a second why it's not such a big deal what version you're using. But if you Google Uniswap website, um, their website will pop up. I believe it's uniswap.org, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it is uniswap.org. And then what will happen is once you get to their website, on the top right, there's a, there's a button you click called Launch App. Um, at this time, no KYC or know your customer is, is required. So you could just use this website without any problems. Um, you're going to need to connect a wallet to them to perform a transaction. So uh, I use a MetaMask wallet. That's my primary wallet. And um, there's tutorials all over the internet that'll go into detail and, and teach you everything about what you need to know, including setting up your C phrase, your password. Um, and um, first you have to do this. But just to give you a quick security tip before I go too much further with this, when, when you do set up your MetaMask wallet, back up your 12 word seed phrase and your password on two different USB drives. Um, this is extremely important. Um, also make sure you pin it to your desktop. If you have two different browsers and you wanna log into it from two different browsers, pin it to your desktop on both browsers. Uh, it just makes it so much easier. 
Um, what I do, and the reason you need two USB backups instead of one is, is if you accidentally uh, drop one in, in, in hot water or something in your coffee and, and it just doesn't work, then you, you've got a backup USB. You don't want to take a chance of wiping out your only copy. Um, if you really want to be safe, make a third copy and maybe send it to a relative that you trust, someone that's not involved in crypto. And, 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 and if your house burns down or something, you want you, you need to be able to access a backup copy because I mean, over this bull cycle, you know, your, your wallet could have 50 grand, 100 grand, or maybe even more in it. And you don't want to lose that because you made a mistake on not making sure you don't have enough backup copies. So um, you also, um, so when you're using Uniswap, um, you, you need to, like I said, you need to collect a, a, a wall, uh, connect a wallet to them. It could be any wallet, but because uh, there's a connect wallet button on there before you do your, start doing your swap. And and I use MetaMask, but there's there's dozens of other wallets out there. Um, you're gonna have to set this up first. You're gonna have to make sure sure your wallet's all secure and has plenty of funds in it. Because if you're gonna buy a coin, um, you're gonna need funds in your wallet. Um, or you'll need to swap out a current coin you own for another coin. You could do either or. Um, I've been buying a lot of coins lately, so I've been adding money from my bank account, but um, I'm, I've, I've also swapped quite a few coins too. So I, I, I've used Uniswap about 30 times and uh, I, I got the hang of it now, basically. So you also need to make sure that when you add funds to your MetaMask wallet or any other wallet that you do with the appropriate network, and, uh, Example, um, the base uh, mainnet offers different tokens from the BNB network, which offers different tokens from the Ethereum main network, which offers different tokens from the Polygon network. So whatever, you, you know, wherever you want to, if you're purchasing a token, you just need to make sure that um, you add that network to your wallet first. Make sure that wallet is properly funded and you have enough money to, you know, whatever you want to do with buying your coin. But even though all these other networks exist, you, you usually still end up buying Ethereum under those networks. So it's kind of a catch-22, but that's how it works. Um, so what, one of the things I've noticed about Uniswap, a little quick tip for you that'll save you a little bit of stress, is I never pay attention to what uh, version I'm using and all my transactions seem to go through fine without even thinking about this. Uh, so when I do the launch app and I log into Uniswap, I don't really care. It, that, it doesn't tell me what version it is because I've looked. I've, I've looked all over the screen. It doesn't say you're using version two, you're using version three. I could really care less because it doesn't really matter because it seems to work no matter what. Um, I've noticed that the site itself doesn't even tell me and I honestly don't care like I just said. If you click the markets tab on coin market cap, you can research a coin before you start the swap process. You'll be able to see if the coin is available on Uniswap and what network supports the coin you're interested in purchasing. Like I just mentioned, there's there's multiple networks. Um, also, if you're on, say, coinmarketcap.com, and you go to the left side of the page, it'll say, it'll give a contract address, and to the right, I think it says base network or BNB network or, or whatever. Um, there's a little button you click, and it automatically copies the entire um, address to your clipboard. So you can paste it, and, and um, the token should pop up on the two part of the swap thing that it has. There's a from, you know, which is the main net you, uh, you want to swap from either Ethereum or whatever. Um, and then there's a the two part. Okay. So I've used it about 30 times to purchase low crap, low cap crypto coins that are basically under a hundred million dollar market caps per coin. And there's a lot of tutorials online that'll teach you how to set up a MetaMask wallet and how to properly use Uniswap. Um, I would say setting up a uh, MetaMask wallet is a little harder than Uniswap because Uniswap is just pretty much a play by the numbers deal. You just you just pick your coins from and to connect your wallet first and then pick your coins from and to. And if you want to do all your crypto and, and, and ETH, there's a little max button, click it. Confirm, then you got to confirm it on your MetaMask wallet. And that's it. And the swap process starts. And then afterwards, you want to make sure you add the token to your um there's an import feature that allows you to add the token you can either add it through a contact con uh, a contract address like like i just showed you like if you get it on coin market cap you can 
paste it from your clipboard or you just type in the name of the token like for example i just uh got bought a couple hundred dollars of a token called i i don't turbo t-u-r-b-o and just for the heck of it it's just a little gambling play uh, i mean i don't even know if it's going to go anywhere but it went up about 40 dollars today so it went up 20 percent. so i figured it w i got it in a good time so i might be able to make a few grand off it who knows but that's what you do you just um that you just add your token either put in the token name and if it pops up great but you want to come you can actually a trick that i have is like when you're on coin market cap you want to write down the first three um letters of the contract address and the last three letters of the contract address and uh, you want to match it to what you see before you um buy the coin you know like like on the two the, because there's 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 like scammers out there and people that'll spoof a coin you might want to buy there might like it could be a popular coin and there can be five or ten people that put like for example i bought a little bit of dogeverse just another gambling play i did a little gambling play and there was like four or five people that were trying to mimic it and and what i did was i looked at the contract address the first three letters and the last three letters and um you want to make sure it matches what they have on coin market cap but the, I didn't, Dogeverse wasn't an actual coin that I purchased in this manner, but I'm just giving you an example. I mean, because Dogeverse hasn't really launched yet. It's still in pre-sale. Um, and I'm not recommending it. This isn't why I'm doing this video. I'm just letting you know that that's what you would do if you're buying, a, 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 especially a really low market cap token, like $10, $15 million, you need to really make sure you're buying the right one, you know, because there could be other people mimicking it. And that's how you get around that is by looking at the first and three, um, last first and three numbers on the contract of just that you get from coin market cap and and then then you can't be spoofed you can't be fooled um so so basically it's as simple as connecting your wallet and what coin you want to uh part ways with in the top field it could either be like i said it could be either a, the let's say it's on the ethereum network and it's the boson coin okay well you, you can either choose the boson coin itself or you can choose ethereum on the top and then um you, you can either directly pay for it with ETH, BNB, Base, Avalanche, Polygon, or another network coin. And whatever coin you want to receive, you want to put in the bottom field. That's what, what I told you to make sure you check the token address because it, 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 it says it shows it in real small print. And most people don't know this. You, you can barely read it, but you need to check it. And it's just something I taught myself, actually. I didn't even like learn this from somebody else. Um, I just wanted to make darn sure I didn't get ripped off, so it, it made sense to, to do that. So I, I'm passing this information on to you to save you a little bit of headache. But the coin, um, if the coin doesn't surface that you search for in the bottom field, try going to coingecko.com um, and seeing if, if they have the contract address in the bottom field as well. In most cases, you'll see the coin surface after doing this. Um, if it's in the network you're, you're looking for, if they in the network they say they're in, it should be under there. Um, now, as far as technical considerations, version one of Uniswap was written in a programming language called Viper. Now, this is a very stable code, so it's really no big deal to use version one now. Um, and like I said, I don't even know what version I'm using when I did my 30 swaps. I mean, I, that's why I said don't even really get hung up on it, but I wanted to let you know that version one is, was so stable that I don't think it matters if you use that versus version two or three because the upgrades are so insignificant, I don't really, I don't really know how it matters. And then money raised. Um, in 2020, the Uniswap team did a Series A fundraiser and got $11 million. And this is four years ago in 2020. Um, some of the investors included Andreas and How Harowitz, Paradigm, USV, and Version 1. Um, version 1 is actually the name of an investment, uh, a VC investment company. And these funds were used to grow this team and build Uniswap 3. Uh, this version dramatically increased the flexibility and capital efficiency of this protocol. Okay, in May 2020, with an increased interest in DeFi, the trading volume started picking up. Most days, the trading volume surpassed $1 million, and the daily liquidity was 10 to $20 million. So, so there's a lot of liquidity in Uniswap. Um, by August, Uniswap hit $150 million. And I mean, this is only a few months from May. I mean, in just three short months, they hit a hundred. They went from like ten to twenty million a day in liquidity to one hundred and fifty million in trading volume and three hundred million in liquidity. So they they literally did like a almost a fifteen x within a matter of three months as far as the liquidity daily liquidity goes. So that's pretty amazing. 
Um, now this represented an explosion in this project. Now the volume was getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, of Uniswap was getting closer to centralized exchanges and they started to get, you know, some of these bigger centralized exchanges like Kraken were starting to get concerned because they've got competition, you know, they have serious competition now. And, and in some of the uh, most popular centralized exchanges like Kraken, like I said, they were getting nervous. Now let's talk a little bit about SushiSwap. Now in 2020, SushiSwap wanted to become a direct competitor to Uniswap by forking the project. Um, and they wanted to add a reward for Uniswap's liquidity providers. Um, and, and they wanted to attempt to steal Uniswap's liquidity and transfer it into the Sushi Swap platform, basically. So this was also known as what they call a vampire attack. And it was successful. They made over $1 billion by doing this. Um, however, even, even after all that, Uniswap is still the main player on the block, not just barely, but by 10 times the volume that SushiSwap and all the rest do. So let's talk about fees. Every time you swap coins on Uniswap, they take a 0.2% fee, or it might be 0.25 now. Um, most of these fees go to the liquidity pool providers. Um, these are the people that give you the capital uh, that allow you to enable your swaps. Um, now, let's, they have a revenue sharing program um, that, that I'd like to talk about. This was just announced about a month ago. Um, they've recently announced a revenue share with their holders. In other words, um, when they make money, people who stake their Uniswap will um, get a portion of these rewards, uh, which will be invested in, in Uniswap coins. I'm, I'm sorry, Uniswap tokens. Um, this is a huge deal. Sushi, Sushi Swap and Thorchain will need to do this to stay in the game and compete with Uniswap. Uh, revenue sharing in DeFi is where things are, are going. I mean, that's like being on the cutting edge of, of, D, of, of a DeFi exchange is offering a revenue share program. I mean, that's like a huge deal. Um, Uniswap essentially gave the SEC the international gesture of goodwill. If, if you guys know don't know what that is, you can Google it. Um, they said, screw you, you're not gonna declare us as a security. It doesn't matter to them. Cryptocurrency with revenue share is very new. This happens more often with securities uh, than crypto. Um, Ethereum rewards holders by burning a lot of their extra supply. Um, and Uniswap, on the other hand, is sharing these revenues. So instead of burning the revenues, Uniswap, they're actually sharing them. Um, and this is what put me over the uh, fence with them as far as investing with them. Um, I actually own a full position in, in Uniswap. I don't remember the exact amount of tokens I have, but... Um, I have I have quite a bit. Um, I have like maybe close to a little over two thousand dollars, and, and and actually can prove this to you because if you go to, I'm going to send you to a link in the description that shows you all my main plays and how much I have in each of them. So you'll be able to see it there. Um, so as far as tokenomics, Mark uh, Uniswap has a market cap of about four point four billion dollars right now. Um, it's ranked 20, number 23 on coin market cap, which means it's one of the highest ranking coins there is. Um, their 24 hour trading volume is currently about 92 million. Um, their circulating supply is about not 598 million unicoins. That's their little symbol is human eye. Um, their total supply is 1 billion coins. Uh, right now, their current price per unit token is $7.46 as of the time I got this all together to create this video. Um, now my, I'm going to give you my Uniswap, my Uniswap uh, price target. I think there's going to be um, newer DeFi plays uh, that, that, that can enter the market. Um, but I think Uniswap's going to remain the leader uh, because, you know, experience does matter. And they, they, they were positioned, they were the first one, they were positioned in the right place. And, you know, it's like, someone that comes out with a version of something similar to windows that wants to outdo microsoft i mean you, you know being a leader and being the first on out of the gate does make a big difference so i'm going to give you my final assessment okay once you hear people all over the internet talking about uniswap and it reaches a zero uh i don't know if i wrote this right it's i think it's 0 0.91 percent uh dominance like it did before that's not a full percent dominance in the marketplace, but it's almost a percent of dominance in the marketplace. Um, this is assuming a seven trillion dollar total um, crypto market cap. The unit token will then have a sixty four billion dollar market cap, not not just a four like it is right now. And this token could be worth about eighty five dollars. Um, this is about eleven x from the seven dollars and forty eight cents it is right now. 
It's not a stretch to expect Uniswap to get to $64 billion market cap since the previous all-time high was $40 billion. So it's just, it's not even like double of, of the all-time high. And when we get in this bull run next two years, it's not going to be hard to just do another 50%, you know, 50, 60% above the 40% all-time high it was before. And then, so you're looking at a, you know, you, you could be looking at an easy 12X. And um, I'm going to get into to that. I want to address this a little bit right now. I need to take a couple minutes because this can change your life if you think about things this way. Okay, let's say right now you have $30,000 invested in, in the crypto market, right? You're just an average Joe that took a lot of their spare money and, and some of their spare money and put it into crypto and you're about 30 in. Okay, I would try in the next two cycles to maybe focus on a 10X. And these are safe plays. These are the safer, like higher cap coins. And you could do 5% in lower cap coins. That's gambling. Everybody likes to go out and have fun, right? Everybody, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But you want, but your main, you know, I would say 80% of your portfolio, I would put in, I would go for 10 X's. Because if you're going for 30 X's, it's possible, sure. But you're also taking on a lot of risk. But you can get an easy 10 X's cycle, in my opinion, um, just by, you know, like I said, I'm not your financial advisor, but you can get an easy 10x in my opinion, going for semi-safe plays like Uniswap. I mean, invest in these projects that have, they're already leaders and have crazy utility, and and they still have room to 10, 15x. So, um, if you do that this cycle, and then like say pull out your seed money at the end, say maybe in you can either do it in 2026 when the market goes into a dip or before the market goes into a dip but but you can even wait the full four years and in 2028 pull out 10 percent um you'll have 300 grand pull out 10 percent you're down to 270 and take that 270 keep it in the market for another four years and then go for another 10x because there'll be other projects out that that, that are gonna i mean and you're gonna hear a million people talk about them and, and it's gonna be easy to do another 10x if you're chill and just getting the right stuff so that's what I would recommend. Um, whatever you allocate, keep it in for two cycles, but pull out your seed capital after say four years. Um, uh, another, if you, if, in my opinion, if you pull it out too early, you're just you're not giving your money a chance to work in the marketplace. Um, so that's basically. So so I, I think Uniswap is a great way to diversify within the crypto space, and and an eleven X isn't bad, and that's my prediction that it could be around 11x and i feel it's an overall safe bet and with their new revenue sharing program in effect it could even be higher than 11x and go up to like a 15x so that being said um i appreciate you guys i'm, I'm up to as it's the time of making this video i'm up to 151 subscribers um if you could do me a serious um you know, if you could become a subscriber, either like the video or make a comment below. All your comments generate interesting dialogue. I'm semi-retired. I answer every single one of my comments because I, I really want to help people. And if there's something I can pass on to you that I know that you don't know, um, it, can, it, it can make you, it can give you a better day. So that's about it. Um, I'll be in touch with my next video. A lot of my videos in the next month or so are going to be about plays that I'm involved with. Um, this is another one. Um, and I think it's important. I know, you know, listen to this fat guy talk for 20, 30 minutes it might not be the most exciting thing to watch, but if it changes your financial future, why not? So hopefully we can uh, become at least virtual friends online and I can help you get to the next level. And I will be in touch soon with the next video, maybe in two or three days. All right. Have a good weekend and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.